Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another adventure of myth, another episode of Mythgard in Middle Earth. My name is Corey Olson, the Tolkien Professor, here with you as usual. And as always, I am joined by my friend Grifflet, who I see has gotten cold since this time. Because, well, of course, he's gotten cold as he's been sitting here hiding uh, in these uh, freezing caves the entire two weeks, or the entire week since the, our last session. You'll remember that last time we stopped very abruptly uh, because I was meant to stop sooner than I even did uh, in order to give the channel over uh, to a special event that was happening. Uh, and I was a little bit late for that because, you know, like time flies when you're fighting Gowradine, right? So I was, uh, I lost track of time and then ended up having to just cut in the middle of, a, of an instance. The last thing you saw was Grifflet getting pummeled uh, by a whole bunch of Gowradine. So... Um, but Grifflet escaped, uh, and as you can see, he's uh, now here calmly, uh, indeed quite brazenly, sitting here by the campfire of uh, those Garadine who were beating up on him last week. Um, and he's been waiting very patiently for us all to join him so that he can carry on and finish this instance and see if we can... Okay, wait, what is it? We're supposed to stop them getting the hide of this dragon so that they can recreate the bellows which are necessary to run the forge in order to repair Narhuil down in Eregion. Right, I think that's the thread here. And I love how the voiceover at the beginning of this instance basically accuses you of complete failure, right? You know, it says, uh, since, um, you know, the, 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 the champions of Eriador have failed, the best you can do is try to prevent them from getting the, you know, the height of this dragon. So, you know, small goals. Uh, uh, and we'll see, uh, we'll see how we do there. Um, but it's about time to carry on there. First, though, before I, before I, uh, um, before I, 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 I do that, I wanted to give you both a, both a, 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 an apology and a consolation. My apology is, I believe that last week I had announced that we were having, finally, our, our long-delayed, uh, uh, turbine session where I was going down to turbine to have a, a, a streaming session with Chris Pearson chief lore master there and with Mike Drought um, the um, the uh, session that I've been looking forward to for so long uh, and of course it turned out on yesterday just as I was actually preparing to leave the house to drive down to turbine um, I uh, I found out that um, as Gandalf says to Marion Pippin uh, in the ring goes south that uh we can go on looking forward uh, because, of course, it was postponed again, tragically. Uh, so, but uh, we, there's a very serious talk about having this again very soon. I haven't given up hope. I believe it will happen. It came so close this time, uh, and I think it really will happen. So that's the apology uh, that uh, that didn't end up happening as we'd planned, and, and I was disappointed. Um, and I'm sorry if you were disappointed as well. Here's the consolation. The consolation is... Um, I, uh, I have some, some, some kind of fun news. So as I think I mentioned before, we're entering the season of Signum University's fundraising campaign where every year we raise money to help support us and keep uh, us open and doing all the things that we do and running all the, uh, the fun free sessions that we run. And uh, we're going to be doing some fun stuff, some fun Lotro stuff. Uh, we started with some Lotro stuff last year. You, you will remember the chicken run that got funded during our campaign last year. And uh, I'm doing another. I, I announced last week that I'm, uh, you know, one event that I'm planning during the campaign, the first weekend of October, uh, which is I am planning the Grifflathon. Grifflet is girding his loins. He is preparing for a good cause uh, to support Signum University uh, to attempt the uh, the unthinkable for a hobbit and go through the epic quest line of Moria from the West Gate to Dimril Dale in one day. That is his goal. He is going to see how far he can get. He's pretty determined to get to the Dimril Dale. Uh, by the end of the day, uh, so we're going to do it. We're going to do a marathon session. Um, if we uh, if we raise enough money in support of Signum during that marathon, we are going to. Ha I'm going to have a follow up marathon. Wigan is going to join in. Wigan is uh, has uh, has promised that he'll he'll join Grifflet here, uh, and uh, I will not join him, not join with him, of course, but uh, but he'll do his own uh, session where we'll get Wigan into Rohan, and I'll get to get my uh, my my war steed, and you can have the. Uh, 
I think that watching me try to learn how to fight from the back of a war steed is likely to be even more comical than watching me run as a chicken, actually. Um, it should be of particular satisfaction to you veteran gamers out there, because um, it's going to be... It's gonna be uh, fairly comical i suspect uh so anyway so th th these are these are two things but but those are things i announced last week here's the new thing right another event where i'm gonna do uh during this time the date hasn't been set yet um but i will let you know and this one this one should not be canceled um I'm going to do a, an interview, a discussion with Maid of Lions from Termine. Um, we're going to get together, we're going to talk about the epic quest line, uh, and uh, I've always wanted to sit down and talk with him. I've never gotten a chance really to do it. I met him once briefly, um, but I never really got a chance to, to sit down and have a discussion with him. Um, so we're going to have, uh, we're gonna have an, an epic, and we're, we're going to do that live, so you can join us live and ask questions and stuff. It's going to be really cool. Um, so. That's going to be having a no date yet, but that's going to be happening soon uh, in October, um, sometime in October, and I'll be announcing the date uh, later on. Now, in order to set things up, of course, for uh, the Moria run, which is not too long from now, Grifflet needs to get things moving. We are in, where are we exactly? We're in uh, book 14, chapter 12. Okay, so we're getting there. Uh, he's got... Uh, um, He's got some. He's got some. Some work to do. Yeah, Fairfenon. I used to. Th <laughs> I, when I first heard it, I also thought Made of Lions was spelled M-A-I-D, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. And you're right. That would be an awesome in-game title. Um, I am the Maid of Lions, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's. Um, it does sound like not even a title, Fairfenon. It sounds like a pseudonym, like a really cool pseudonym, right? Is that the Maid of Lions? Um, yeah. Anyway. I, I, that's totally, that was the first thing I thought of, too, for, uh, for Venom. Okay, so, let's go. Uh, I, so I think, let's see, Griffith, what's going on here? All right, where are we? Let's head up the hill and see if we can find that dragon. How about, let's sneak. You've got your warm weather gear on, Griffith, that's so sensible. Ithil, huh? What's he doing? What on earth are you up to? Are you scooping the flesh out of your own warrior and eating it? Seriously? Prey. Oh, you mean me. Hey, I guess stealth is really no point. It's Mordrambor! After all they've cost my pack... Were you just eating that guy? Okay, so... Thou shalt soon have thy prey, okay, have thy prey soon enough. Come closer and see the power of Angmar. You know, I don't want to obey you, really, for any reason, Mordrimbor. I'm not coming closer. No way. I'm gonna come around this corpse that I oh. Too late again, huh? Oh yeah? Uh, the oh. Oh, you fought Bregmore. Okay, you just killed him, huh? Long and hard, and many of Ethel's pack were slain. Yet in the end, Bregmore fell before Angmar's might as will all things. Right. Um, now the beast's hide shall serve Angmar the fires of... Oops. What happened to the fires of whom? Hang on. Uh, the fires of Tam Mardin will shall be stoked again. Narkia will be forged anew. But I don't need to concern myself for that. Uh, oh, wait, yeah, that guy's going to kill me? Oh, Whatever. Take my gift to my associate. Huh? Your associates now? Come, brothers? Oh, goody. I'll fall before the pack? I kind of doubt it. I mean... I pretty much did in most of your pack on the way up here, frankly. Here. 
Can I target the totem? Yes, I can. I don't know what that totem is doing, but it can't be good. Okay. Let's go back to targeting Ithel here. You got this, Grifflet. Don't worry. You get him. Oh, you got more morale than he does now. Oh, yeah. Completed the instance. Even before I kill the other wolves. Oh, yeah. Okay, now I gotta go back and talk to Irujana, but I might as well kill the other wolves first. Irujana, Irujana, I suppose it is. I can now uh, answer some more questions, I think. Okay. Woohoo! Strong work, Grifflet. Don't let Morjambor taunt you. It's not like we really wanted to thwart them. We wanted to go down to a Regian and stomp on them there. Clearly. So that's fine. Take some chunks of ore while we're here. All right. That was kind of a smallish dragon. Do I just have to walk all the way back? Really? I should just let the wolves kill me. That'd have been faster. That's all right. Oh, I know what I can do. Okay. So, um... Let me, uh... Let me queue up a lore question. What do we have here? Okay. So, because I've, I've killed all these guys, but I sneak past the worms. So. i got to head down here and back to the gate that that first guy opened for us. There it is. And there's a bunch of worms. So let's see. Lower question. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, Fableville 8, who was a new attendee last time, uh, just finished the Lord of the Rings books and asks, when Gandalf comes back as Gandalf the White, he responds to his name with, yes, I was once called that, wasn't I? Yeah, he's, yes, I was Gandalf. You, you may still call me Gandalf, he says, right? I love that. Um, um, he, it, it, there is that moment where it seems like he's surprised, like he doesn't actually remember his own name, um, which I agree is a little bit. That's that's a slightly odd moment. Um, yeah, and if you were wondering if I was just taking the quick way back to here, I to I totally was. Yeah, that was the uh, um, super quick travel, uh, which is dying and 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 appearing at the red circle where you want to go, basically right next to the stable master. Yeah. So I was disappointed to find that the red circle that I got to from inside that instance was down here the first time when I accidentally died. What do you but then, need? of course, I immediately said to myself, hey, wait, did I did I actually remember to? No. No, I didn't. Okay, fine. Surikala, please. Excellent. So, okay. So, yeah. So Gandalf has that, that weird moment where, you know, he's like, Gandalf? Yes, I was Gandalf. Um... Anyway, okay. And lying on the mountain, he sees a void and stars and stuff. So does, does that mean that he died and was kind of reborn as a white wizard, or did he undergo some type of inner transformation? Uh, yes. Um, the first bit. He died. Gandalf completely died. Um, he, uh, he snuffed it. He shuffled off this mortal coil. He uh, uh, had run down the curtain and joined the choir invisible. He was an ex-wizard. Um, and then he did come back. So th this relates to um, 
uh, kind of what the wizards are um, because he... Um, uh, 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 all right. You have two different kind of creature. And when you're talking about rational creatures in Arda, they basically fall into two categories. Category number one are this, the purely spiritual beings, that is, the Ainur, the, the Valar and the Maiar, right? The spirits who live over in Valinor. They are spiritual beings. They don't have real bodies. They can clothe themselves in bodies, okay? Um, so they can choose to take on a body, but as Tolkien says in the Valaquenta, the bodies that they put on, it's like you putting on clothes, right? Your clothes are not an intrinsic part of you. Uh, you put on clothes, you can perform different functions with certain clothes, you can demonstrate certain things about yourself, right, by the clothes that you wear, but they're not intrinsically a part of you. They are, they are a choice that you make to sort of uh, uh, adorn and represent yourself, right? And such are the physical bodies to the Valar and the Maya. Um, the other category of creature in Middle-earth are the incarnate races. Um, that is, those who have both body and spirit, and their bodies and spirits are joined together at birth and separated at death. Um, and these, of course, are the races uh, fundamentally of the children of Iluvatar, elves and men uh, being the primary examples of these, and dwarves being the sort of you know, other example of the stepchildren of Iluvatar, right? Don't ask me about orcs. We're not talking about that right now. What we're talking about are the other races uh, here in Middle-earth. So the incarnate races, body and soul, um, which, are, which, are, which are joined together. Now, wizards. Wizards are kind of neither, f uh, f you know, flesh nor fowl when it comes to this. On the one hand, they are Maya. They, they, they were over in Valinor. They are, you know, minor spirits who have been there with the Valar from the beginning. And the, the Maya are, are sort of associated with particular Val. Like each Valar has a bunch of, like, has like a posse, right? You know, like they have their own, uh, they have their own group of, uh, of, of, of Maya. And the, the wizards were originally some of those, okay? Um, Gandalf was one of Manway's uh, 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 Maya, Saruman, Kurumo, as he was called, was one of, uh, one of Aule, the, the smith gods, um, uh, Maya. Uh, Radagast was with Yavanna, uh, the goddess of, uh, you know, of life and animals and plants and stuff. Anyway, so, um, okay, so you've got, to, so, so the wizards, they, they start off life in that one camp, right? Um, but when they came to Middle Earth, they did something different. They did something, so far as I know, unique. Um, they did not just manifest themselves in physical form. So that when the wizards show up in Middle Earth in the Third Age, mind it doesn't happen earlier than that. It's in the Third Age. When the when in the Third Age the wizards show up, um, they are not merely Maya taking on physical form, like putting on the clothes that look like you know old men, basically as as Gandalf and Saruman uh, look. Um, they're, they're not just taking on those bodies. They are incarnate in those bodies. There's this, like, special thing that's performed. When they undertake this task to come to Middle-earth, they're not just being sent over like, hey, I'll put on a body and head on over, right, to Middle-earth and help out. Um, their relationship with Middle-earth is, is different. In fact, the, 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 there's a kind of parallel here, um, and it fits the shape that we see in Tolkien's world so many times where something happens, like, in the big picture, and then the same thing, or a very, par a very closely parallel thing, happens again, like in smaller terms as time goes by. Um, so uh, and we, we we can see that in in uh, in many different examples. Just as you know, you've got like Morgoth, the big bad, um, you know, sort of Satan figure of Middle Earth, and then you've got you know Sauron, who is his like mini me, right? Um, and he becomes the Dark Lord, and he's like still like a miniature Dark Lord compared to the old Dark Lord. Um, but uh, but anyway, there's there's there, there's a, a a you know a very direct parallel there. Um, anyhow, so um, so the parallel. When the Valar originally came to Middle Earth, you know the sort of the angelic beings who are who are at times called gods in Tolkien's earlier writing, he called them the gods all the time. Um, uh, the, the 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 gods of Arda, um, the the main spirits who oversee them, they were not all of the Ainur. The Ainur are this you know like the angelic choir basically who sings the, who does the music um, that brings about the creation of the world. Of course, you read about this in the Ainulindale at the beginning of the Silmarillion. Um, not all of them descended into Arda, but those who did were bound to Arda for the length 
of its existence. They can't leave. So they didn't just come down to Arda and they can wander back up to the timeless halls of Iluvatar if they want to. They can't. They're stuck here. They've committed themselves. And they're tied to Arda. They're, they're tar tied to the world. Uh, in a way, there's several points, for instance, in Tolkien's earlier mythology where he talks about the Valar aging. Right? There's, there, there will be a time of renewal at the end of the world. It's kind of like the New Jerusalem in, in Revelation, when there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And at that time, uh, it, it, again, in the, in the earlier writings, Tolkien talks about the Valar growing young again. Right? So they're actually aging. Uh, they're, they're actually aging and changing with the age of, of, of Arda as it goes by. That sylvan squirrel is still lost. He really need, he lacks gumption, i got to tell you. That squirrel's been sitting at that intersection the whole time. If he looked harder, he could find the woods. Um, but anyway, okay, so, uh, so the Arda, the, the Arda, the Valar are bound to Arda, right? They've entered into it. So, so you see the parallel, right? Just as the Valar left the timeless halls of Iluvatar and chose to bind themselves to Arda and enter the world and be connected to the world intrinsically in a way which is, in a sense, foreign, to their native being, right? They, they, they chose to sort of restrict their being and change who they were or kind of how they worked, right, in order to connect themselves to Arda. So the Astari, the wizards, when they came from Valinor to Middle-earth, they too bound themselves to Middle-earth in a different kind of way than just like, I'm going to manifest a body and pop over there. Right? So they become incarnate in bodies. It's body and spirit joined together so that they age they uh, slowly, but they age, um, and they can uh, you know, suffer pain and fear, and they can be killed. And if they're killed, their spirits do, can return to, uh, uh, to Valinor, but you'll notice, um, right, as you're, and I've already forgotten, I've already forgotten, uh, 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 Fableville 8. Um, Fableville, you'll notice that they, um, he doesn't, when, when Gandalf dies, um, his description of what happened to him, what he experienced when he dies, he doesn't just like pop up in Valinor, right? Like, hey guys, I'm back. I got, you know, I, I got, uh, like the, there's not like a big regen circle there in Valmar, right? Where Gandalf shows up, uh, when he's defeated over here in Middle Earth. Um, instead, and, and really, uh, I don't know about you, but I, I have totally finished an instance just like Gandalf did, right, where he throws down the Balrog and then bleeds to death afterwards and completes the instance posthumously. That's totally what happened to Gandalf, right? Uh, anyway, so um, it's happened to me several times. <laughs> you completed the instance. Hooray, you're dead, but that's okay. You completed the instance. Um, okay, so... Uh, Gandalf does describe sort of seeing the void and the stars and everything. He doesn't just pop up in the middle of in the in the middle of Valmar. So it's it's kind of uncertain exactly what's being described, what's happening to him there. It seems to be by the power of the Valar, really by the power most likely of Iluvatar himself, that he's being sent back. I think Iluvatar has to be on board with the whole incarnation thing. Um, I don't think that's something the Valar can just kind of do. Um, that seems to be, a, a th but again, we don't really, know, we're not told that much about that and how that happened. But anyhow, okay. So, because the wizards were in this sort of middle place where they were Maya, right? They were these spiritual beings, and yet they, um, uh, they were in really incarnate in bodies and thus could really die. When Gandalf comes back, he doesn't just like lose his body, pop up, back up in Valinor and be like, mm, I got some more work to do, I'll be right back, right? And he just pops himself into a new body and goes over there. The process has to be repeated. He has to be given like a second dispensation, a second incarnation. Um, and it's clear that in the second incarnation, he's given a different task. And his he's different. He's changed. So the White Wizard is fundamentally different um, because he's been you know, he's been charged with this new task and he's been given more power in order to complete that task. So they notice when he's different, he's different, right? He's qualitatively different, not just quantitatively different. He's qualitatively different um, because he is. He's it's still him. It's still his spirit. He still has his memories, though, again, it seems weird that he doesn't seems to not recognize his own name. But I think that is not because he actually you know, forgets or is, or is in fact different. You know, it's not like he's like, oh yeah, um, I'm supposed to be called Gandalf because you would think of me as Gandalf as like he's a totally different person. And he's like, a, he clearly does have the memories of Gandalf. He's the same spirit. He's the same consciousness, but he's been reborn. 
Um, and uh, I mean, reborn as an old guy again. He's never an infant, um, but he is. Uh, he 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 really has been. And rebirth, I think, really is the best way to look at it. Even though, again, it's not birth in a literal sense. But um, he he's he's incarnated again. But it's not the same thing as re. It's a little misleading to call it reincarnation because that makes us think of something quite different than the process that's happening there. He's in- incarnated a second time, and it really is a kind of rebirth. And I think the reason that Tolkien has him like what we can see. What, what we learn from him in that moment when he's like, Gandalf? Yes, yes, I was Gandalf. Come to think of it, you can still call me Gandalf. Um, is basically an acknowledgement of how different he is now. Of you know, He's not just changed in the sense of like, boy, I've been through a lot since we last met each other. I'm not the same person that I once was. Right? The, the hobbits are different when they get back to the Shire, but Gandalf's difference when he comes back from death is a different kind of difference than how Frodo, Sam, and uh, and and you know Mary and Pippin have changed when they get back to the Shire. Um, he's not just grown up. He's not just become enriched with a new and uh, 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 and interesting experience. Um, he is changed in his essence because of this sort of this this gift, burden, power um, that has been granted to him. That's that that's now working through him in order for him to fulfill the final end of his task. So. Um, that's what I think we're supposed to be understanding there, and that's basically sort of what the books tell us about kind of what's going on there. I hope that uh, that helps a little bit. Um, I kind of like Forakow. It gives me time to give nice long lore answers while I take slow horses around. All right. No, I don't want to seek the wisdom of uh, Saya. I already the did that. speaks your name. Okay. Bregmore was an evil creature, but it is sad still that such a great beast perished in such a lonely way. (laughs) It's such a lonely way. Seriously? You're like, I just, I'm sad that he was alone when he died. Yeah. What what year, Yanni? You wanted to be there to hold his hand when the dragon died? Of course he died alone. He was a dragon. Dragons are always alone. (laughs) Anyway, that's funny. More troubling still is that the Rautavaki succeeded in defiling the person of the Lohikarme. I know, right? I was just going to say the same thing. And Mordrambor, why would he aid in this fashion? So, okay, so you don't like that the the Rautavaki are the the wolfmen, right? The the Gaurudine. And they succeeded in defiling the person of the dragon. Yeah, well, that is bad. Um, Why would he aid? Wait, why would Mordrambor aid in this fashion? What are you talking about? Is he not an enemy of Amarthiel? Oh, oh, I see. Why would he not aid Amarthiel? Is he not an enemy of Amarthiel seeking her ring for himself? It is very strange and troubling. Well, uh, I mean, look, Iryana, I mean, if he's seeking the ring for himself, he still needs to remake it, right? So, I mean, if this is the only mechanism, I mean, it's broken in half. So, I mean, if he, if he needs a mechanism by which it can be reforged, he's going to get, I mean, he needs that anyway. If he came here to get it, that means he controls it. For all you know, uh, you know, Amarthiel didn't want him to get it. And it was not a two-way race between us and him, but a three-way race between us and him and the servants of Amarthiel. Maybe, right? Um, and uh, it's still interesting to me that there were no Angmarim involved in that instance, right? He had just allied himself with a... I, you know, it just looked like he just basically hoodwinked, uh, um, you know, one of the chieftains of the da- of the Garadine and came in and made him do all his dirty work for him, which, you know, hardly seems... Uh, Surprising under the circumstances, but um, all right, we've got a nice, uh, nice mace here. Come, Ete Laviras, I would speak with you. Okay, I should return to your Vanavaki, this Eglamir. I am sure he will want to know of your failure. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he'll want to know of my failure too. Uh, don't forget to tell of the involvement of Mordrumbor. You will, yeah, that does seem like a feature. What it means, I do not know, but perhaps others will know what it foretells. I believe you said he dwells in the... Yeah, I remember where he lives. Yeah. Hurry. <laughs> Hurry to Kellendu. That's, that's, that's fantastic. That's fantastic, yeah. Um, okay. We're here. And he wants me to hurry all the way across the continent down to here, right? It's like a several months journey. But better, better hustle, man. Any day he could be out of there. Any day. Okay. All right. That's fine. All right. You know what? Thank you, Iriana. I've really appreciated it. It's uh, time to change back into my cold weather gear. There we go.
Or my warm weather gear, rather. All right. All right. Oh, how nice that the the take me home skill in Nickel Delta puts me right next to the stable master. That is so convenient. It's fantastic. All right. <laughs> I missed this witty bit of dialogue. I love this. See my text down here? It says, Garadon Raider says, Ugh. Yeah, he sure did. Um, okay. Hey, Toron. Yeah. Still got the skinny stables going on. Those are the skinniest stables I have ever seen. Really need to think about widening those. I mean, I know you're probably thinking... Okay, the contractor screwed up and he made the stable doors too narrow. But look, we're leaving here any time now, right? We're all just hanging out here until we go to the Grey Haven. So why fix the stable doors now when we're just leaving Middle Earth for, behind forever, right? So, I mean, it might seem like a waste of time. Um, but they've probably been that way, right, for probably like a couple thousand years. And you're just like, it's not worth changing them. Make I know how you elves think. Okay. There is little hope now that we may hinder Amarthiel from reforging Narkula and bringing her armies to bear upon Eriador. That's the spirit, Eglamir. Uh, especially if this Lord of Umbar, this Mordrumbor you spoke of, is aiding her once more. Well, let's not, you know, you know what they say about assumptions, Eglamir. Um, Will you lend me your ear? Uh, do, you, do, you, do you need one? Uh, an ear, that is. Okay, fine. There's no more aid I can give you. And... Let's be honest, Eglamir, you never really gave me all that much. Um, with the hide of Bregmore and Celebrimbor shaping tool, there is naught to keep Angmar from rekindling the forges of Aregion and reforging Narkiwell. You have failed, but think not too poorly of yourself. The chances were slim at best. Okay. <laughs> you failed, but you never really had much chance of success. So that's, that's fine. You should return to Rivendell and bring this dire news to Elrond Half-Elven. Okay. All right. Yeah, I know where Rivendell is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, um, hurry to Riven from here to there, right? But you better hurry, because you never know. All right. That's fine. Let's go talk to Elrond again. Hey there, yeah. Rohedir. What do you need? Um, I need a, a horse that you can get out of the stable door. That's really what I need. Okay. Thank you. Uh, a pony. I mean, a pony. A pony that is uh, not too tall and not too wide. All right. Excellent. Um, ooh, okay. Uh, uh, Matt Mistar asks, thinking of Matt Maystar? How do you put the... Which syllable do you put the, the, the emphasis on on that one? I'm not really sure. Uh, Matt Mistar asks, Thinking of Boromir, how come Tolkien used a name that sounds Slavic? Really cool question. Um, uh, first of all, I need? would point out in general that uh, the... Uh, well, okay. It might sound Slavic, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it is Slavic. In fact, Boromir is um, is a name that's derived from Tolkien's Elvish languages. Um, it, although it might sound Slavic, it's not. Um, in fact, there's a cool story there. Um, in So I have mentioned before that I have just... Uh, Finished or been teaching this uh, this uh, uh, this session on the Lost Road, right? We've been doing we've been going through Tolkien's Lost Road, Volume Five of the History of Middle Earth series, um, which has been awesome. And I've I've kind of digressed on that a couple times uh, before. I think um, I'm finished with my bit. Um, we have one more bit to go concerning which How can more I in a second. Service? But um, anyway, so um, in the Lost Road the name Boromir appears uh, there for the first time. And uh, Boromir in, is a first-age man, and he's one of the good guys in, um, in the, the, the uh, Nirnith Arnoidiad, or the Nirneth Arnoidiad, as it still was at that time. Um, 
no, near Nith Arnediad. That's what it was, yeah. Anyway, um, so, um, in the Battle of Unnumbered Tears. So you remember, in the Battle of Unnumbered Tears from the Silmarillion, um, you've got uh, the two elvish armies, right? And you've got uh, the uh, Hurin and his folk who are helping Fingon and Turgon over on the, the west side, right, of the battle. And then from the east, uh, you know, Maedros and the sons of Feanor are coming in with, a, with another army, and they've recruited some guys too. And so you have the men who have come over, the, the, uh, the, the swarthy men, as they're called, the shorter, dark-haired, uh, stocky men who are like slightly more like dwarves. But anyway, they come over the mountains, and they look all fierce and everything, and so Maedros says, hey, this looks like a great idea. I'll get them to help. Um, and uh, there are two like different families uh, of the men of the swarthy men who are named who take service under the sons of Feanor. There is uh, a, a, a boar and uh, Ulfast and Ulwarth, and the uh, and uh, 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 Uldor the accursed. Yeah. Um, so the uh, the family that begins with with uh, B remain faithful. Boar and uh, uh, and his and his family, um, and there's the once the um, uh, old Ulfang and Ulwarth and Uldor the accursed, um, who betray them and stab them in the back. They attack the elves from behind, right as it looks like the elves might possibly win, and and everything goes downhill from there. One of the good guys there, the you know Bor, as he's still named in. Um, <laughs> That's why I'm not on a horse. I almost rivendelled right off that bridge from the center of the span. Um, so uh, uh, Bor, as he's named in the Silmarillion, was in the um, in the Lost Road in the the, the Quenta Silmarillion, which you can find in the Lost Road. The version that Tolkien wrote in the late 1930s, like 1937, um, was named Boromir. And here's the cool thing, and the particularly interesting thing. So so on the one hand, you could say. Well, that's kind of interesting, right? That Boromir of the Nine Walkers um, is named after like one of the people that betrayed the elves, right? So you would you you might think that his um, his fall at the end of the Fellowship of the Ring is foreshadowed in his name Boromir, but remember, not so. The guy named after him was the guy who remained faithful, while his companions, you know, the other family. Um, betrayed them, you know, turn, turn, turn traitor and went over to the other side. And what's more, there's a sort of a linguistic joke there. Well, not joke, but the name Bor, or rather the root, the stem word Bor, means faithful, enduring, right? So that element in a name, um, in the Elvish word, means means faithful, right? So that when that when he's named Bor, I mean, he's he's just he's he's named so Boromir's name, the root word of Boromir's name is faithful. Now, you can decide whether you think that that was done in irony, right? In the Lord of the Rings, um, that it, it, you know, or that it, you know, designed to sort of enhance the tragedy of that moment, right? That the, you know, the heir of the Lord of Minas Tirith and this, this wonderful leader of men, Boromir, uh, falls to the allure of the, of the ring, you know, whose very name means, you know, enduring faithfulness falls to the allure of the ring and, and it therefore sort of, you know, emphasizes the tragedy. That reading seems to work uh, to me. You could even see it as a kind of like, a, you know, don't um, don't judge Boromir too harshly kind of uh, kind of move. I think it's um, it's really emphasizing the uh, the tragedy uh, there. But uh, anyway, so that's where Boromir's name comes from. It's, 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 although it, it does, it is kind of Slavic in, in sound. Um, it's not, Dark it's not merely just, just a Slavic name that he's, that he's brought in. All right, Elrond, the ring forges will burn again. I know you sound excited about that, Elrond. Amarthiel will reforge Narkiwal and use it to lead her armies against Eriador. Boy, you elves are all such, you know, uh, downers, you know? I mean, like, oh, yeah, I, let's, you know, it's not raining yet. The sky isn't falling. We might still be able to do something here. At her side will be Mordrimbor, who appears to have sided with her once more. Well, hang on. Elrond, did you hear what I said to Eglamir about assumptions? 
right? Um, we don't know that. I mean, it did not sound to me. Mortimer didn't talk about his lady. He didn't suggest that he was in. Well, what he said suggested the contrary. He talked about his associate, right? Um, which suggests, first of all, A, that he does no longer see himself as the servant of anyone. Um, and you'll notice, Elrond, that there's, a, there's been a progression in Mordrum Moore's character, right? First, he was the faithful servant to Amarthio, who, would ne who you know, won't betray her and continues to do her work um, while in captivity and all that stuff, right? Then he shifted his allegiance and talked about a new master, Right, so he he he, Amarthio was his was his mistress, and then he he took a new master, um, whom he didn't reveal who that was, uh, but he took a new master, and now he's not talking about masters. Now he's talking about colleagues. Right now he's talking about his associate. So he clearly now views himself as an independent agent who is merely in collaboration with somebody else. So he's not returned to Amarthiel's service. It doesn't sound like he's in anybody's service, but I'm guessing that Amarthiel is probably not the person that he's considering his colleague, right? The one he's considering his, uh, his, 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 his collaborator uh, there. So that's probably somebody else. Um, and uh, I think we still need to see it. So, so Elrond, you're, you're, uh, you're jumping to conclusions here. If this happens, the North will be crushed, and though Rivendell will stand, it will only be a matter of time before we two are overrun. Can we call time out on the doom saying here, Elrond? I mean, it's like, if this happens, then that happens, and this is, um, I mean, uh, despair is for those who see the end beyond all doubt, Elrond, right? We don't. Put an, let's put an end to Amarthiel's plans once and for all. Exactly. Let's have some Estelle Will you lend me here, your Elrond? aid once more? Okay, yeah, no problem. You can have my aid as many times as you like. One last hope remains, Grifflet, and vain it may well be. What if the hope is me? Then you're saying it might be vain. I'm going to try not to take that personally. I must travel to Mirabelle and try to put to an end, put an end to Amarthiel's plans there. Okay, I agree. That was going to, I was going to plan to do anyway. I must hurry. It may already be too late, but there is a slender hope that she has not yet received the materials she needs to rekindle the forges of Aragion and reforge Narhuel. Right, she hasn't received. So she has the tool from the tomb and the hide from the dragon. Uh, uh, but she might need some other kind of obscure ingredient that she hasn't gotten. Right, yeah, well, here's hoping, Elrond, right? Mirabelle is far to the south of Rivendell in the land of Aragon. It's okay, I can just pop down there pretty quickly. May the stars shine upon your road. Okay. Excellent, yep. Yeah, I will accept this fellowship quest, absolutely, no problem. Um travel to Mirabelle and try to stop Amarthio. Okay? I'll do that. Now, I don't think Grifflet's ever been to Aragion. So I think we're going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. That's what I suspect. What time is it? Oh, well, we're still good. Look at that. We've still got 45 minutes. Let's see if we can get to Aragion. All right. Um, all right. Off we go. Let's uh, let's do another lore question while I make my way down to Aragian. Hmm. Trying to figure out the best way down there here. Am I over level for Giant Valley? Will I attract the mobs in Giant Valley? Does anybody know what level they are? Are they going to be grayed out? Tell me if the if the mobs if the mobs in Giant Valley are going to be grayed out. If so, I'll go through Giant Valley. If not, I'll go around. I don't want to mess with like kiting all of the drakes and wood trolls and troll shots after me. Yeah, Griffith's 51, so... Yeah. Alright. I'm just gonna go straight out. Because I don't have any travel context, I think, for anything. I'm gonna do this the old fashioned way. Ah. 
I beat you, Rivendell. You and your nasty bridges. Okay, St. Joni says I should be good at, 50, at uh, 51, so the... Okay, all right. All right, if they're grayed out, I'll go through. I, I'm pretty sure I can I remember how to, how to find the route in Giant Valley. Got lost there once before. Okay, more than once. Now, I did not turn. I didn't even twitch. What the heck? All right. Okay, up we go. So, all right, so while I make my way, let's see if I can both navigate and answer a lore question, which I know is always a little touch and go here. Um... Okay, Eroheb asks, How independent do you think the princes of Dal Amroth actually were during the time of the stewards? I seem to recall them as being described as practically independent. Great question. Okay, because Prince Imrahil is, is kind of a, a an odd character, right? Or sort of an odd concept. Like, who is this guy, anyway? And exactly what is his relationship uh, to, um, uh, to Minas Tirith, right? What is his relationship to Gondor? Is he... Uh, is he uh, uh well so okay first of all remember that um several of the regions of gondor apparently have their own independent lords right like forlong the fat lord of lasarnach right so lasarnach you know you've got lasarnach and he's the lord of lasarnach but uh he obviously has field you know a, 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 a you know he has sworn fealty to gondor and is uh, um is responding like a vassal basically, of, uh, of, of Gondor, of Minas Tirith. Um, so it seems that the king of Gondor and the steward in his absence rule over um, the, a collection of lords, right, who have different kinds of titles that rule different areas. Um, by the way, let me just say, because, I, I mean, most of you probably know this, but I didn't know this for a really long time, so just for what it's worth. I know when I was young and reading Tolkien, I got totally thrown off by his title of prince. Um, because when I was young, the title prince had only ever meant one thing to me, and that was like the son of the king, right? Um, and so seeing him called Prince Imrahil always kind of confused me. I'm like, if he's the prince, why isn't he becoming king? Right. And like, why is that not on the table? I don't I don't understand. And I think, it, you know, I was influenced by, well, lots of other concepts of princes, of course, um, from, you know, fairy tales and Disney movies to things like uh, Narnia. Right. Um, I think of the passage at the end of uh, The Horse and His Boy, which is my favorite Narnia book, by the way, um, when Prince Corin, Corin is prince, right, because he's the son of the king and the heir of the king. But then it turns out, I love how just going through, walking through a drake sets you on fire. That's kind of fun. Um, anyway, so I, when uh, at the end, when uh, Shasta is revealed to be Prince Kor and his elder brother and the heir of the king, and Kor, that was Shasta, is apologizing to Corin, saying, oh, I'm sorry, like, I didn't mean to, like, do you out of your inheritance. Um, I, you know, is it, is it going to be okay? Let's see. It's the next nook over, right? That's the nook with all the dwarf iron and lebethron branches. And this is the path that goes down to Oregon. Yeah, yeah. Awesome place down there to farm uh, for crafting resources. Um, scholar stuff, too. All over the place. For some reason, there was like some library of the old days that just got scattered around that valley in Giant's Valley and you find these uh, uh, you know all these uh, these scholarly relics all over the place down there it's so slightly comical anyway so when Shasta is apologizing to Corin, who's grown up his whole life thinking he was going to be king and now he's finding out that this other guy who didn't know the, you know his long lost brother has come in and has taken over you know as heir of the king and Kor is assuming that he Corin is going to be pretty mad about that right and instead Prince Corin says oh hooray right I never have to be king it's princes that get to have all the fun right and he's uh, Corin is awesome um, by the way I was like um, probably this close to naming my second son after Prince Corin actually uh, it, it came we, we didn't in the end go with uh, Corin uh, this is my son who's actually named Matthias but uh, that was uh, it was it was Corin was on the short list actually for a while uh, but anyway so um uh, that's that was always my concept of of 
prince, right? Uh, prince, like in the in the general sort of cat category of royalty, but basically discussed in contrast to being king. It's the thing you you are when you're when you're royal, but not ruling, right? That was that was always my definition of prince. Um, and so I always kind of wasn't sure, like, so what does that say about Prince Imrahil, right? Is he of the royal house in order to be a prince? But if he's of the royal house, why didn't he become king, right? You know, why didn't they, I mean, okay, you know, so like, is, what, what, is, is he an heir, therefore? Because how can you have a prince in a kingdom which very famously uh, has no heirs of its kingship, right? That, 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 this is why that threw me for a really long time. But of course, the reason for this is that the word prince um, does not mean that. Um, it, uh, oh, look, I've got mobs who may attack me now that I'm through the troll shots. Um, gotta stay slightly alert. Um, so, um, so yeah, so that the traditional um, definition of, of prince, the, the traditional usage of prince is not that. Um, it was, um, if anything, the uh, the that idea of prince as uh, royal but not ruling is a kind of a f fiction that come. Well, I'll talk about that later on. The original meaning of it, how that word was used m almost all the time in English, um, in the Middle Ages, in uh, the Renaissance, means like prince. The word prince was a synonym of sovereign. Um, so like you have. Uh, you know, treatises uh, in the Renaissance, like in the Elizabethan period and stuff, talking about, like, the rights and powers of princes, right? They don't mean of the heirs to the throne. They mean of rulers, um, of, uh, of, of sovereigns of nations, right? So to be a prince was to be the sovereign of a nation. Um, so how did prince come to mean the person who was royal but not sovereign of the nation? Well, um, because the term prince... You know how royal children tend to be given honorary titles, right? Um, like they'll be called the Duke of wherever, not because they actually exercise any oversight over that region, but just as an honorary title as being the, you know, the child of the, ooh, ancient silver. Um, just as being the, being the child of the, of the monarch. Stupid crabine. Um, anyway, so um, uh, honorary titles. That's how the word prince came to be associated with those who were of the royal family but not ruling because prince became a common one of those. And of course, the most famous of these uh, honorary titles was Prince of Wales. Um, and those Prince of Wales doesn't mean, like, I am the prince who is in some strange way associated with Wales. Well, the association with Wales is strange enough. But, um, but no, of course, what it actually means technically, like, what that phrase, the Prince of Wales, denotes is I am the sovereign of the land of, of, of Wales, right? And that, um, that, uh, that particular title, by the way, uh, came in, uh, was brought in by Edward, uh, the first, yeah, Edward the first, the one who uh, built all the castles in Wales. Um, he conquered the Welsh and set up uh, castles with which to, you know, this ring of castles around, uh, with which to oppress them uh, and keep them in line. And what he did was he then took his son and he brought him over to uh, uh, to Carnarvon, which is the sort of his central seat there. Um, and I know that those castles were built in order to oppress the Welsh. But they're gorgeous castles, and if you ever get a chance to go and visit the ruins of Cairnarvon and uh, and Harlech, I love Harlech, such a beautiful little castle, uh, and Bomaris, which was never finished, but it's still really cool. Anyway, really, really awesome if you're into medieval architecture and castle architecture. Just uh, uh, some of the some of the most gorgeous surviving uh, sort of castle designs that you can see anywhere. I absolutely love the Welsh castles. Anyway, so uh, Edward goes to Cairnarvon, and he installs his son, his infant son at the time, um, and names him Prince of Wales. And the idea was he was trying to keep the Welsh in line, right? So his, his, it seems like his vague sort of hope was, hey, um, I, can, I can take my kid and my son and heir, 
right? Who's going to be, so they hate me, right? Because I just conquered them uh, and, you know, hard feelings. So, um, uh, but maybe I'll, I'll install my son and make him Prince of Wales. And then like, he, he'll be the ruler of Wales and maybe they'll like in time accept him. And then later on, he'll be my heir and he'll become king and it'll all be good. Right. It didn't pan out <laughs> at all. But anyway, that was kind of that was kind of the plan. So it's for reasons like that, that the that, you know, for for honorary titles of that kind, um, you know, naming your heir, the Prince of Wales, um, meaning the governor, the sovereign, the ruler of, 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 of the country of Wales. Um, that's where that name, how that name kind of came, came down around that way. So Prince Imrahil, therefore, is prince in the sense of he is the sovereign of his, of his region. Um, his title is the parallel to the Lord of Lasarnach, right? So he is, uh, uh, he is a, a feudal um, lord underneath, uh, you know, he, he's sworn fealty to Gondor and serves Gondor in his relationship with... Um, uh, with Gondor is very close, right? And he's he's very loyal, but um, uh, but he's not. He he does have he does have independence, and it does seem that the the rulers of the Outlands. We, I mean, we don't get that much information about this. It's hard to really draw uh, very confident and firm conclusions. But it does seem that the uh, uh, the the lords of the of the Outlands did have a fair bit of autonomy, um, so that Prince Imrahil really is the prince of his own uh, of his own realm. Let's see where. I hate it when that happens. All right, yeah, I'm headed that way. Okay, I'm still headed in the generally the right direction. There it is. Okay, almost there. All right. Okay. So after a little digression onto castles. James of St. George was the name of the architect who designed Edward's castles in Wales, and I just love his work. I mean, again, it's like, it's horrible and everything. It really is. Like, and I don't, I don't mean to offend uh, the Welsh. Um, I remember the first time I visited uh, Wales, and I was in, I was at Carnarvon because I'd, like, read about Carnarvon, and, and I'd studied, you know, pictures of it and taken a little mini class on it and everything. So I got to see it for the first time. It was so cool, and I was so excited. And I was at this, uh, you know, this, this uh, like, tea shop, you know, in the town of Carnarvon, and I was just kind of gushing about the castle. And, uh, and I was like, oh, man, this, the Welsh castles are so beautiful. And my, uh, my waiter <laughs> says to me, he says, English castles, you mean? And I was like, what? He's like, castles built by the English to oppress the Welsh, you mean? And I'm like, um, uh, yeah, 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 those. That's, 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 that's what I'm talking about. Oh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, so, like I said, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mean to be insensitive, but, uh, from a purely, you know, archaeological standpoint, uh, they are, they are really gorgeous. Okay. Um, we are almost there. Do I get to cross the bridge? Because that's Mirabelle over there, right? Do I get to go up here? I do get to cross the bridge. That's what I thought. Okay. Griffith, you did a great job of going straight there. Hey! Look, it's Kiriana. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, well met indeed. It's just, just a little stealth healer hanging out, just in case, you know? Angmar has gathered all they need to kindle the forges of Eregion. Right. The champions of Eriador must now travel to Mirobel right. and do whatever they must to foil the plans yeah. of Marthia. Let's foil the plans. I'm all about that. Okay. Time to get stealthy, Grifflet. Okay. And I'm going to try to pretend that Gandalf didn't just say Eregion, because, of course, it's pronounced Eregion. Uh, with a hard G, as is, uh, for instance, and somewhat confusingly, the uh, the um, the name Regian on the Silmarillion map. There's a place called Regian, which is it's spelled like region, right? And it look may look kind of funny, like kind of generic, right? Like so, there's an area just called region, <laughs> right? No, it's called Regian. Actually, it's a hard G, um, but uh, it's an easy mistake to make. And so this is Regian. It's named after the the Regian. Um, 
It's not a coincidence. Lyrden! Oh, I'm sorry, are you writhing in pain? Look at me here. Hey, I caught up with you, Lyrden. You sent me around on about a four years journey, but I caught up with you. Yeah. How can I be of service? How can I be of service? Uh, uh, you can stop writhing. That's okay. Let's see. Uh, you were a fool to be deceived so easily by a Marthio. I'm glad you said it, Lyrden. I don't have to. And it has led to this. There is hope. Um... There is hope, however, for she left me alive. Perhaps if she can be hindered from reforging Narkiwil, Narmaleth may be reclaimed. To enter into Tamirdain, you will need to defeat the, the Gortharog who holds the keys to the forges. His name is Strok, and he is a mighty foe. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll hurry. Oh, what? Did you just expire? Ugh. You, you, uh, oh, okay, he's breathing. I don't have to, like, do first aid or something here. Am I just going to leave him? Just leave his body? Regular elvish trick, as Shagrat would say. Uh, can I... Um, you wait here, Lyrdin, all right? Don't, um, don't move. And I'll take care of things. I'll defeat Strock the Door Warden. What do we have here? Uh-oh, who's that? Who's this? Who's the dead guy? Is he a half-orc? Kind of looks a little half-orcish. Are these the servants of Saruman who are being... Because Saruman has overrun this place with his Dunlendings and his half-orcs as we pass them by, but now they've been taken over by Angmar, right? So these are Angmarim orcs who have come down here and killed Saruman's servants. Yeah, see, here's a skirmisher looting the corpse of another probable half-orc. Okay. All right, all right, I'm following. I got you. Okay. Lots of people down here, but easy to avoid. Even for one less stealthy than Grifflet. Okay, more orcs. What's this? Excuse me, grass. I'm trying to get out of the foliage. Yeah. Darn it. I can't get a wide enough angle on this. Ah, finally. Okay. All right, so this is blocked. But it was lovely, and it's time. Is this... Is this a grapevine? Like, are those blue things bunches of grapes? They don't look like grape leaves. Are they flowers? Like, um, like bunches of flowers, like lilacs or something? I'm trying to figure out what, um... Because that's a really dominant, you know, image up there above the... above the arch. You would, th I mean, like, this is in the place, right? Right, right above the arch, where, in a Numenorean structure, they would clearly have like seven pointed stars, and all that kind of thing. But no, instead we get uh, some kind of vine-ish, something or other. Um, all right, can't go in there. No problem. Let's see. Can I go through this door? Oh, yeah. No, this is the key. This is the door to which I have to get the key. All right, fine. Where is Strock? An orderly row of scouts. An extremely orderly row. A little skirmisher up there. A little camp over here. What was this? It's 
stupid foliage. Um, was this um, uh, um, what was this? Little picnic spot? I'm trying to like recreate Tom or Dine in my mind here. Like, so back in Kella Brimbor's day, what would this have looked like? Like, so for instance, this random pillar that's standing over here, which is a lovely pillar. It's connected to those pillars on the other side of the river? Maybe? That one looked really big. Was there another one here? This looks like it used to be a pillar, right? It's definitely shaped and broken off. Or that was a row alongside street lights, um, aqueduct. Uh, hmm. Not really sure. Looks like Celebrimbor spent all of his time in the forges and not much time doing urban planning. Is what it looks like to me. Oh, there he is. Okay. Now let's sneak around the back. Can I get in the back? I can get in the side. That's pretty good. Hey, Strzok, I'm just gonna I'm gonna have a snack. If that's all right. Hey, I hope my bread is not stealthy. Right, I'm stealthy, but my bread is not stealthy. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna have some fish. Right, I'm having some loaves and fishes here. All right, and a little bit of that. A little bit of that in case we need it, huh? How about a little bit of that? Yeah. A little scroll action there. I used a reading glass, apparently. Okay. Well, you killed a bunch of half-orcs, huh? All right, Strzok. Oh, I can't stab you in the back, can I? More bodies for the pile. Come on, Strzok. Let's do this. So I'm just going to try to take you straight up, Strzok. Let's see. Let's watch that. You're doing pretty well so far. That's right. Toe to toe with Griffith, the mini guardian. Oh, I probably should have interrupted that one of you, Missed him. That's okay. Not worried about you, Strzok. I, I totally... I've got you right now, you? And you... You have me at No problem. I'm making more progress on your morale than you are on mine. And I just sneak past every single one of your underlings. Strap. Right, do you have any idea how useless that makes you? Ah! No, I don't think so. We can't have you healing yourself. that mountain trolls, that trolls have hooves like this, right? I mean, look at his feet. They look like the feet of what? Like a rhinoceros' foot? Something like that?
And are those his ears? Are those your natural ears, or are those falsies? I mean, I can understand why you would wear false ears, because... I mean, let's be honest, you couldn't get any uglier. You failed the mistress. So you are faithful to Amarthio. Okay. Defeated Struck. Boy, I accomplished a lot with that one little feat there. Okay. All right. And now I gotta enter. I was gonna go report back to, uh, uh, I was gonna go report back to Lairdon, but. And then again, he's uh, unconscious now, so I'll just let him rest. All right, we'll just let that go. And I will sneak back over here, past the little, maybe it's a gazebo. Maybe that's what this is. This was an elvish gazebo. This is a Noldoran gazebo. I can believe that. Ah, I see. Whoa. Now look at the doors. Yeah. Who is next to the doors? Celebrimbor. Same statue as we see in Rivendell, right? Um, um, what is that? Just a spire? Like a random obelisk? That's interesting. The obelisk thing is interesting. Let's go look at the obelisk. What is that pattern down there? Resolution's not good there. Hmm. Not really much here to this obelisk. But, um... But just fascinating that they built it in the first place. No, it's not an obelisk. It's an arch. See, ah, from this angle, from the front, it looked like an obelisk, but it's not. It's an arch. Where did it go? Where's the other half of the arch? Over to the gazebo over here. Up on the wall? Somewhere over there? No? Over towards the gazebo, I guess. Oh, look, see, there's another one that way. There, there. Over there. So they, either there were several arches. Wish I could get a, a helicopter shot of this. So maybe you had this gazebo here with the multiple arches connected to it from the outside. Okay. All right, so not much for urban planning, but the, the individual features are quite lovely. But this door now, this is the really cool thing. So, okay. Celebrimbor's statue, right? We, we know this is Celebrimbor. No, not Celebrimbor. Did I say Celebrimbor? Holy cow. This is Gilgalad, is what I meant. Natural, so what I was thinking in my head, and I was saying the wrong thing. Celebrimbor, of course, built this place. But this is Gilgalad's statue. You can tell because that's Iglos. That's the spear, right? The same one, again, that we see um, the, right there in the, in the entrance hall, right, of, uh, of Rivendell. Now, the interesting thing here is that his shield, which looks otherwise identical, does not have the stars on it. The countless stars of Heaven's Field were mirrored in his silver shield. Shield, um, It didn't have, doesn't have the stars in it, but... It does say that they're only. Um, it does say they're only mirrored, right? So um, maybe there weren't actually stars on the shield then. It was just a silver shield which mirrored the stars, and this one isn't mirroring the stars, so it's just plain. That would make sense because it's the same shield shape 
as the one in the statue in Elrond's house. The major difference is that he's wearing an Egyptian hat. We were just looking at this the other night. On Tuesday night, when we did Mythgard Adventures, we were doing a, a Ostgorthoron uh, raid. Um, we're coming towards the end of the In Their Absence quest chain, which is really cool, and I've never done that before. Um, and I got to fight the Balrog. That was so awesome. Um, and I learned that Balrogs, though they don't have wings in Lotro, they apparently, although they don't have wings, comma, apparently in Lotro, they have like Triceratops tails, which is really cool. But anyway, so, okay, so you've got this Egyptian cr crown and headdress thing going on there behind Gilgalad, right? Um, now the gate seems to me to be evoking <sighs> bushes. Seems to me to be uh, evoking wings. You know, I, I'm almost tempted to kill those orcs just to get them out of the way. Because I want to back up to where they're standing. Anyway, okay, see like how how you've got that what looks like the uh, you know the, the overlapping feathers, right? With sort of the shape. It looks like two wings up sort of like this, right? Um, which you would think maybe that could be Gondorian, but it seems to be it seems to be um, I mean, obviously this is not this is not Gondorian, this is Noldorian, which is fascinating, right? I mean if these are wings they wouldn't want to evoke swan's wings. You'd think they'd be a little self-conscious about the swan wing thing on account of the whole kinslaying deal. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, that's definitely that's definitely Gilgalad, it would seem. And he's got a crown. Well, of course he's got a crown. They would want to. He doesn't have a crown in Rivendell, but they would depict him with a crown um, because uh, uh, you know they're the. They're the jewel smiths, right? They would have wanted to give him a crown on his statue. Um, all right. Ooh, nice effect on the ceiling there when you walk in. I like that. Doesn't that also look kind of bird in flight there? The pattern on the vaulting. Huh, cool. That was Celebrimbor, the statue of the guy with the hammer and holding up the ring, right? That was Celebrimbor, um, just like in, just like in Rivendell. Okay, there's a gate. Pale folk. Hmm. The pale folk seem. Not the horn blower. <laughs> oh, I disrupted you like a boss. Oh, I almost never get to him in time. That was awesome. <laughs> okay. Ring lore of Tom near dying. Okay. We're sneaking, we're sneaking, we're seeing whose statue this is, another Gilgo ad, right? See what I mean by the, doesn't that look Egyptian, right? Doesn't it look kind of like a pharaoh, right? With that, the horizontal stripes and the thing that sticks up behind his hand. Ah, very interesting. More of those high arches. Notice how delicate the arches were, all the arches are broken off, right? Because um, the stonework up at the top was so delicate. All right. Hmm. I'm trying to decide if I can carry on. I don't remember how long... The, does anyone remember how long this instance is? Because I need to go before too long. I've got about two minutes, and I do need to end on time today. And if this instance is too long, I'd, I'd really best... You must warn the others. You're a jerk. Yeah, come over here if you want to fight me. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Um, okay, Hologrow thinks I can finish in 10 minutes, so I'll give that a shot. If not, maybe you can hang out here like he did last time. Who are you fighting? Oh, the guy around the corner? Oh, the guy up on the plinth! Hey! <laughs> Look, I can already barely reach your vitals. Get down here or I'll chop you in the ankle. <laughs> I will stab you repeatedly on the foot. And you won't like it. Found the torn manual of ring lore. Really? Did I? There's a missing slave, huh? The angry and priestess. It'll be your back that gets the lash if you don't find him. So there's a missing slave, huh? Going straight across. No, oh, through this gate. Can I just go through the gate? Stealth again. No. Okay. You miserable wretch, work harder. You guys are such jerks. Um, is this the Ring Forge? Oh, there's a Gorthog up there. Ooh! Is that carving? Is that Kel Brimbor? Look at that mural! It's a mural! How fantastic! That must be like a, a group shot, like the company picture for the ringsmiths, right? Look at this. So here's Kel Brimbor, presumably, right? And there's like the rest of the smiths. And everyone's enjoying themselves. And we've got the rings here. Right? Is this a happy picture or a sad picture? I think it's a happy picture. Right? Probably. Probably a happy picture. Or maybe it has foreshadowing. Right? Um, maybe it has... Because uh, he... Doesn't it kind of look like three rings down here joined together within this arc that connects the hands of these two symmetrical elves, right? And then there's this other ring which has a dark red center, which makes it look all malevolent. Now that's only because it's a gold ring, but the it's just the red background, right? He happens to be wearing this red, you know, this uh, fetching red stripe that goes down the middle, right? Um, so is are these the rings of power that they were forging and this is sort of this anticipation right of the uh, of the ring so it's 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 irony I guess this is lovely okay I better take out these horn blowers that's what I'm thinking and how about I take them out one at a time didn't work. Dang it! I must have been too far away. Oh well. I love Nero 
Jesus. Oh, there goes the other one. Come on, you can see. Alright, line up, everybody. After all those Gyarodyne and Wolves I just shot at once, I don't think you're going to scare me. Okay. Alright, I'm going to take you down, if you don't mind, and then I'm going to go... Because I think I gotta go over there, because I think that's my destination, isn't it? Kinda looks like my destination. Right under the portrait of Celebrimborn. That's cool. Okay. Oh, that is so nice. Yeah, I choose to think this is a happy picture. This is probably this is probably the picture that was drawn on the occasion of the like the the Guild of the Jewel Smiths last like, you know, company picnic and you know, that's Celebrimbor addressing them with his uh his speech and telling them how they're all getting big bonuses that year. Those were the good times, right? Um, is there something over here? What's the thing over here that I am not going to be able to stealth over and do anything with, so I'd better just get down to business. Hey, everybody! Yeah, how about I start with you, Anglerin Princess? going so well. Let me start with the other people. All right. Yeah, now that I see it closer. Yeah, because see, okay, because it looks like there are four rings. Which, in a non-foreshadowing sense, doesn't really make much sense, because why would there be four rings? Because right? down between the arches, they've got the three rings, one hovering above his hand, one hovering above the other elves' hand, and then that big one in the middle. But that big one in the middle looks different. It doesn't look like it's... I don't know. Number of rings seems a little bit odd. Or even, really, is the problem. Um... Let's not uh, pay so much attention to the murals that we uh, all die an unfortunate death. It's all fun and games until you die an unfortunate death. Oh, I can injure you now. Well, that's fine. Okay, so is that really a shield at the bottom or is it just sort of design? I wonder. Gotcha. Oh no, just the scavengers? You guys, why don't you just go free? You really don't have to. There's a rotten manual. Is that my goal, the rotten manual? I found the rotten manual of Ringor. All right. Um, why did I want to find the rotten manual of Ring? Ring Hang on a second. What's going on here? Okay, yeah. Ring lore of mute. Oh, yeah. Torn manual, rot manual, dusty, and the aged manual. Okay. 
what about like the new and improved manual of ring lore right or the uh you know now up to date for the first time manual of ring lore oh well at least i did get to inspect this more closely what's down here are these vines do we have more vine action i don't see grapes though or flowers really see what i mean about the number of rings though But, you know, I gotta tell you, even if he's announcing the bonuses and they're all really happy about that, this is an uncomfortable picture. Right? The way that he's standing up there like, you know, some kind of deity and, and they're all, like, staring up at him. It's gotta really make you wonder about Kel Brimbor, doesn't it? Okay. Alright, Gorthrog champion, let's do this. Oh, yeah, no, this. Yeah. Oh, come on. Okay. Hurry up, Gorthroy Champion. Let's get this over with. I've got ring forges to find. Holagro says he forgot to he forgot to uh, factor in my art appreciation into his time estimate. <laughs> Holagro, you should know better than that. I mean, Griffith's never been to a Regia. Up. I'm late for my 2.30 meeting, Gorth Rock Champion. Yeah, if you think you are mean and ugly, wait till, my, wait till you see my 2.30 appointment. Oh, that's gonna be serious. Okay. Another swan wing door. Stealth. Kel Brimbor statue. Yep. Looking at his ring. Holding his hammer. All right, we're wanting to go this way. Back to the door. Fight the priestess. You must rally our forces. Oh no, you must not rally our forces. You must fail to rally your forces. Hey. some different forces over there who's hitting me and with what oh you are from way over there oh come on man Did she rally you she's still over there causing up causing trouble people I've got I've got I got meetings to attend I've got deadlines to meet Griffin is uh, in a hurry to get to the ring forges I mean as who wouldn't be where the rings of power most of them were forged right I mean that's cool we're still in combat because there's still priestesses running around doing their running around thing here she comes I don't want to attract the horn blower. Right? So, okay, good. 
And you didn't heal either, which was nice. Didn't find any forces to rally, huh? You were scampering around and everyone was ignoring you. That's got to be embarrassing when you're trying to rally forces and no one will pay any attention to you. And the forces are like, rally yourself, lady. We're busy over here doing... I'm not quite sure what we're busy doing, but... It's more important than coming to help you get killed by this ninja hobbit over here. Phew. What is he? Uh, oh, here's another horn blower. A named priestess. It's probably going to rally somebody. Two scouts. All right. The mistress foresaw that I would come, huh? Proven resourceful, yeah. Resourcefulness will not avail me. That's what you think. Oh yeah, I've got to get rid of your eggs first. Fine. Let's get Angmarim Scout. You first. Oh, she's gonna run off. And there you come. with my guardian. Trying to be faster. Not gonna make it. Alright. Well I think we're gonna have to resume here next time, Grifflet. You uh you'll be you'll be fine. Grifflet will get better and we'll come back to the priestess Graina next time and we'll start with the end of this instance. That'll be good. I do have to run. I'm late. Um but uh that's okay. No worries. We're gonna... Ooh. Druid's Fire, does she have a spider motif on her outfit? I missed it. I'll have to look at it carefully next time, Druid's Fire. Thanks for the, thanks for the pointer. Anyway, thank you very much. Um, so next week. Next week is Midmoot. Right, so uh, Midmoot, uh, the uh, the the conference, uh, the you know our uh, the Mid Atlantic Speculative Fiction Symposium, which is going to be down at the University of Maryland next weekend, um, from Saturday morning through Sunday at about noon. Um, it's going to be great. There's going to be lots of really fun discussions and presentations. I'm going to be there, and Verlin Flieger is going to be there, talking about the next Tolkien book that is being released soon that she's editing, and uh, 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 Janet Croft, another great Tolkien scholar is going to be there uh, uh, it's going to be it's going to be great so I hope that uh, some of you will be able to come and join us go to signumuniversity.org um, and scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and you'll see our event link down to where Midmoot is and you can register there um, we will uh, we really look forward to, to seeing you I know I'm going to get to meet a bunch of people from here um, which is going to be uh, uh, which is going to be really exciting. Fair Venon is coming. Can't wait to see you again, Fair Venon. And uh, I hope I get to meet uh, more of you. So I'm actually going to be flying. I'm going to be in the air next Friday at this time. So, But I'm going to reschedule because, of course, Grifflet has a has a schedule to meet, right? He's got to get ready for the Grifflathon uh, in the beginning of October. So I'm not going to be able to do next Friday, but I'm going to reschedule, right? So we'll, we'll, go, uh, we'll go at a different time, probably maybe Sunday evening. We'll see. But... Um, he definitely um, needs to needs to maintain his forward momentum here. Uh, so thanks very much, everybody, for joining us today, and I will see you guys soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye now.